Hey everybody, it's Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I have, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I, with all my audio problems, I want to um, draw and talk, and there'll be a lot of starting and stopping because I can't, like, if I fast forward through anything, there'll be no audio and no music, but I will try to make them small fast forwards. You know what I mean? Uh, speed it up. Oh, stinking shadows. I do my best not to have shadows, but it doesn't matter what I do. I've got seven, eight lights on, and it makes no difference. <laughs> We're having a rainy, cloudy day again today. You know, this is bizarre weather for us. I live in central Texas, and even on cold days, we have sunshine. Not now, since I'm recording. <laughs> All right, so I want to draw something for this next stamp. I can't tell you what day it'll be because I have like four or five videos that are waiting for voiceovers and as soon as I fix my audio issue with Windows 11. I don't know why Windows changes from 10 to 11 when 10 was perfectly fine. You're fixing something that isn't broken and then you create new issues. I, I just, I don't understand this. Anyhow, I want to do something different this time. I explained this in a previous video that I was going through my um, stamp book and I happened to look in the front and there was this giant paper clip there and there were four or five of these little two by two squares that were lined in, you can't see it, I'm sorry, because of the stinking lights. I just, uh, this way. Uh, they're one quarter inch squares in a two by two square. So it helps you with positioning your stamp. So I thought maybe I would use this as a guide to try to get things more even. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but you know, we're going to try. I just thought it would be fun to use them. And I want to do a different a different take on a repeating stamp. So I'm drawing, oh, this light. So I'm drawing, oh, is that better? It doesn't matter, I'm gonna have shadows. I, I, I can't fix this. There. So that's what I've got so far. Um, I think what I might do is go ahead and rub this on the rubber and then carve this first then go back and make any kind of design adjustments I'd like to have in it. Okay, let me get my stuff. Okay, so we have it on the... I think this is Speedy Carve is what this is. I think I mentioned that in one of the other videos that you haven't seen yet. <laughs> um, this is from Speedball. And I do like it because it's like pink soft bubblegum. Alright, so I'm just going to rub that on there. Oh, it came out nice. Not bad. Okay, so I'm going to take my little ruler and exacto and make a surgical cut. <laughs> Let me back it off just a hair. And I want to talk about the other designs, but I can't because you haven't seen the silly videos yet because there's no audio. If my husband didn't have such a loud TV in the other room that I could hear through the wall, this would not be an issue. Okay. Let us try... A medium. Well, let's see. I got to figure out which one of these is whoops, smaller. Oh, this one definitely is. Is this one T even teeny? Yeah. Okay. So we have large. This one's medium. Small and smaller. <laughs> All right. This is yeah. All right. So we're going to. I'm going to carve on these lines here. Whoops. And I. 
think I know why I'm having such a hard time with some of my lines is that I press down hard in one place and not the other. So it, it expands this, the speedy carve. When you put pressure on it, it kind of flattens out. So like a jelly plate, when you put too much pressure on it, it kind of spreads a little bit. That's what happens here is I don't get my, um, I press down too hard in one place and my pressure is not consistent. So I have some lines that are fatter than others. And I'm trying to not press down as hard. But then, you know, I have a hard time seeing them if I don't. <laughs> so, man, it's terrible getting old and your eyes go and... Uh, okay, I can barely see that one at all, so. Plus, with all the lights, y'all think it's really bright, but it's not as bright for me as it is for you when you watch these things. So, you know what, let me, let me do this so I can see what I'm doing. This is crazy. I'm just slogging my way through this because I can't see diddly squat. The black lines really help a lot. I know other people have colored them in with Poscas and colors and stuff. All right, so I've already done these others, so I'm not going to do them in black because they're already carved. All right, let's try this again. And it is really hard to, ca to carve exactly where the line is. See, I have a nice groove here, but it's hard if you don't draw the line on it. It's hard to see where you're going. And it's hard to make it stay perfectly on the line. One thing I learned when I took Julie Finfay's class is that you turn the eraser. You turn the rubber. It's much easier that way. Some people, I've seen other people do it on things that turn, but then I would lose control and it'd be spinning like a top. So I think maybe this is the best alternative for me. Oh, that one didn't curve very well. Okay, and it's probably a thicker line than the rest. It happens. I'm trying really hard not to do that. I have to say, one of the best parts about carving this stuff it's not the carving, it's the jelly prints. I love seeing the jelly prints. Okay, here's this, this light over here on the side. Hang on, this thing is so stinking bright. I need to point it away or up or something. It's just too much. Is that better? Well, I don't know. Okay, so let's see what we're gonna do here. I think what I need to do is I need to stamp this so I can see my progress. Stays on black. Oh look, there's a piece of paper right here. I can faint. I don't care if I can't see the grid. That's not important right now. All right, so let's do it this way. It doesn't matter, it's a two by two. And the design is kind of the same on all the sides, so who cares? Voila. Okay, so I need to clean this edge up right here. Uh, which edge is it? This one right here. I wanna make sure that goes, um, this one too. I wanna make sure they meet and one does not overshoot the other. There's that. Let's go all the way to the edge. There we go. And Let's make sure this one smooths out a little bit better so it doesn't look weird. This one has rubber stuck in the hole. There we go. This one needs to be connected. It's a little bit better. It's not perfect, but hey, you know, it's for fun. Let's try this again, see what we get. So 
if I do this on a jelly plate, oh, I like this. Look at that. Okay, let's do right and left. Left, right, top, bottom. All right, so there we go. So now, when I look at it, I feel like I need more because when it's on a jelly plate, there's going to be lots of co color and then little tiny white lines. I need more oomph to it. I need something else to go in here. I could do more lines around here like this, you know. All right, so I'm going to show you something that I learned years ago when I started doing this, and I can't remember who showed how to do this, but I have to tell you, whoop, I remembered this the other day. Stamp your stamp, then take a white Posca and draw the lines the way you think you might want them on the stamp without carving the stamp and ruining your stamp. Or carving it and then go, oh, I wished I hadn't have done that. Uh, like, see, I've got many days of that. <laughs> so then these would be carved like this. Of course, you know that's where the stamp ends right there. But to get the cohesive look, Do I want something more swirly? One, two. This has one, two. One, two. And this has one, two, three. Ah, let's see. So I have three here and two there, so I would need to make the adjustment to make sure they're all the same. Let's put three there. Okay, so. This is what it'll look like if I carve it out. Um, so I don't know what else I want to put in here. I don't think I want another circle. I could make a triangle. Kind of like this. Do I want to do anything in the middle of the triangle? So that means I will have to carve all of these and then do the triangle in the middle here. Yeah. Um, let's try a different point of view. Let's let's try something different. So let me restamp it. I don't want to carve it and mess it up. You know, and be unhappy with what I did. So this, for me, is a time saver in the long run. No, actually, it's an aggravation saver. <laughs> so if there's no tears in carving, that's a lie. <laughs> You're like, oh, I can't believe I just did that. All right. That there. Oh. I didn't press down hard enough. Let me put this on lid on here so it doesn't dry out. Where's the plastic doodah? Uh-oh. I'm missing the plastic part that goes over this. Oh, what happened to it? Huh. That's weird. All this stuff on the desk. I put everything away, and this one had a plastic shield on it. Maybe I miss... Maybe I don't see it. Because <laughs> it's not... Light enough in here. Okay, I'm going to have to go find it. All right, so I have these. And I'm, I really do like this in the middle. So I am going to put that there. I'm going to carve that. So let's do that. Then I could do this. I don't think I like this already. That's why you do this so that you don't mess up. I don't know. The more I look at this one, the more I like it. But what do I want to put in the middle here? I 
don't think I can get this small enough to do that in there. I don't think this is going to work. This is too tiny for me, even for me. I don't think I can. Well, I could. I just got to remember to count one, two, one, two, one, two. I'm, I'm not sure I like this either. I think, no, I think I'm better off with this one and maybe leaving these blank. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. I am gonna carve the circles around these, and I am gonna do this in the middle. Then we will reassess. So this part I'm gonna carve, I'm gonna fast forward, there's not gonna be talking or music, sorry. Okay, did you hear me counting? One, two, one, two, one, two. <laughs> I like the way this looks. All right, let's see. I think we need to up the ante on this. Well, no, I guess we'll make this consistent with all the others. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start in the center and go down the white lines as best I can. And see, I pressed down too hard, so this is gonna be a big old fat line. Yeah. Come on. And then we'll stamp it again to see if I need to make any kind of line adjustments to make sure all the lines meet. Oh, I just mashed down a little too hard again. Con consistency is a very big part of this, I think, and I'm not a consistent person, so this is a real challenge. <laughs> You know what? I think I'm going to go tiny here. Go a little smaller. That way if I press down, it won't be horrible. All right, pressing and turning and turning and pressing and wishing that it'll come out right. Okay. This is more tricky than anything else, these little bitty ones, because you want to make sure it goes off the end of the stamp so that the two parts meet without some kind of weird line obstructing them. So you need to make sure that the, the ends are cleared completely off. Of course, there's no guarantee that the ends will meet anyway, but you know, you wanna hedge your bet. All right, and then that one. Eh. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, this one's definitely going to be crooked. Okay, so I'm gonna fast forward through the rest of this or cut it out, one of the two. Okay, all done. Uh, let's see how well I did. <laughs> That's kind of scary. What happened?
into my little plastic thing. I cannot find a plastic top, and I don't think I threw it away, so I guess it's in here somewhere. All right, so let's try here. I'm sorry, I'm trying to stay in frame. Oh, well, that didn't go very well in the corner. Let's get all this rubber out of the way. All right, let's try this again. Oh, and it's crooked. <laughs> I went right off the edge of the paper. Okay. But basically, this is it. So you can see the middle parts kind of went the way I showed you it was going to go with the Posca. So I'm almost pleased <laughs> with the way it went. It's a little sketchy in a couple places, so I'm just going to go with the tiniest one to make the little adjustment to make the lines meet. That's the main thing that makes it look better is that the lines meet and the lines go off the edge of the paper. Like this one didn't quite make it. So I stamped this a couple more times and this is what I've come up with.
Okay, so you saw the jelly print, uh, which was the first one. This one was the first one with the black ink, and I like the black ink with the uh, color behind it. I need to line up my, my uh, rubber is not completely square, two by two. It's a little kind of onky on the side. I'm okay with that. I just need to remember to kind of adjust it a little bit whenever I go to print. Um, I like this look. I like the yellow behind it. I think it makes it look lovely. All right, so I tried it with the red. Did yellow below and the red on top, which is not a good look. You can barely see the print. I mean barely. I can see it, but I bet you can't. See? Oh, all the lights are not helping. Then I thought, well, let me reverse it. This is much, much better. If you do the red first, then the yellow over it, you get the yellow in all the empty spaces, and I think that looks much nicer for a background than just pfft, that. <laughs> so there we go. We have this and this. We have... I can't show you the other half of this one because you haven't seen the video yet. Let me make a little surgical cut. Bing, bing, bing. This was the first one with the ink. Where's the rubber stamp? <laughs> I can't find the stamp. There's, oh, I put it in the water. All right, so I learned this from watching somebody else's video. This is, um, what is this called? Beep, beep, beep. Murphy's Oil Soap. And she said that, you know, rubber's not going to come apart when you get it wet. So what she does is as soon as she finishes printing, she puts it in here to keep the ink soft so that all she has to do is give it either a wipe or a little brush down later on. This is from yesterday. And as you can see, the paint more or less has come off. I did printing with two other stamps yesterday and the paint has come off. And this one the same way because they're all black because I did it with black ink. So, um, so this is a really great idea. This saves up on cleanup time. So all I have to do now is go in the kitchen and rinse it off with some warm water, give it a nice little pat, turn it upside down, and let it dry. All right, so that's my little tip. So I will see you guys in the next video. And hopefully I will have a whole bunch of videos because I'll get the audio fixed. See you later, and thanks for coming, guys. Bye.